Hey guys, welcome back to Sparkman Homestead. I have another Meals of the Week video. So the very first meal we are going to get started with is a crock pot meal. This week I actually did quite a bit of crock pot meals and I did a lot of very easy to make quick meals. We actually had a house guest staying with us this week so I really wanted to have good meals but also meals that I didn't really have to spend hours in the kitchen making. So the very first meal we are going to do is a cilantro lime chicken. Now I I put four chicken breasts into the crock pot. You can use thighs if you don't have chicken breasts. I added a little bit of onion powder. You can use a chopped fresh onion if you would like. We just don't like the texture of them, so I just use the powder. Then you're going to add half a cup of chicken broth and then juice from two to three limes. If you do not have fresh limes, I did not, so I just used a lime juice in this and it worked fantastic. You're going to add one can of black beans. I just drained off the juice and just made sure they were good and rinsed, added it to the crock pot, and then one bag of frozen corn. After I dumped this frozen corn, I did not realize how freezer burnt it actually was, so I really had to get it used. It tasted fine, but <laughs> it looks a little rough because it was. I added a little bit more lime juice after I put this corn in because I realized I probably didn't have enough in there and we like a really limey mixture. So you are going to put all of these ingredients into the crock pot, put it on low and cook it for approximately six to eight hours. Mine took around the six hours. You're gonna come in and shred it. This is perfect over top of just rice by itself. You can put it on a burrito, but because we are in the height of lettuce season now, we have cool weather, so my lettuce is growing fantastic. We did decided to make a chicken kind of lime salad. So I have my salad greens there. I made up a little bit of white rice earlier in the day. So I added that onto my salad and I actually made a Southwest salad dressing and I completely forgot to turn the camera on to show you guys. I believe one of my very first videos that I actually did on YouTube was showing you guys how to make that dressing. So if I can find it, I will leave it linked for you. I added a little salsa and some cheese and that Southwest salad dressing to mine also. This recipe is really cool because you can actually take all of these components before you actually put it in your crock pot and just throw them into a freezer bag and freeze them and then in the future if you want to make that you just take the freezer bag out of your freezer and throw everything in the crock pot. So it's not only a good crock pot meal but it is also a good freezer meal. For the next meal, we are going to make some mini turkey meatloafs. It's a really cool recipe. You actually just make them in muffin tins, so it's super easy to make. I ended up doubling this recipe because the original amount didn't seem like it was going to be able to feed everyone. So what you're seeing me add is double of what I'm actually telling you. You're gonna start with one pound of ground turkey. If you don't have ground turkey, ground beef actually works as well. You're also going to add one third of breadcrumbs, but it, recipe actually does state that you can use oatmeal. She said that either one works great. One third cup of Parmesan cheese, one egg, and one eight ounce can of tomato sauce. So I did not use tomato sauce, I actually used ketchup. Now she said if you substitute with ketchup, just use one fourth ketchup in the meat mixture and then save the other one fourth for the top. She says that the ketchup adds a little bit extra sweetness, so I definitely went for the ketchup with this. You're gonna add half a teaspoon of garlic powder, some salt, pepper, to taste, uh, several shakes of Worcestershire sauce. She said approximately a teaspoon. I probably want a tablespoon because I love that in anything. Now this recipe is really versatile. You can add pretty much anything that you like in here. She said that you can add a handful of veggies. If you have onions, mushrooms, zucchini, broccoli, spinach, anything like that, you can add to it just to kind of fill them up a bit. I ended up using a little bit of powdered onion in mine just because I wanted the onion flavor but I did not um, want the texture of the onion so that is a really good substitute as well. Once you get everything all mixed together and incorporated you're going to put them into the muffin tins and just pack them in and then I just top them with a little bit of ketchup and brush that on top. I have my oven preheated at 350 degrees. You're going to put this in and cook them for about 30 to 35 minutes just until they come out completely done. I sacrificed one and just kind of cut it open just to make sure indeed that it was cooked through. Definitely was. This was a really, really good meal because like I said in the last meal, we are in just salad season right now. I made a huge salad to go on the side of this and some mashed potatoes. 
the salad had a whole bunch of fresh cucumber, tomatoes, because I still have a little bit of tomatoes in my garden. I put some fresh picked carrots in there and then I made a balsamic vinegar dressing. This was really, really delicious. For the next meal, we are going to make a side dish. This recipe is from the Pioneer Woman and it is a slow cooker butternut squash mac and cheese. We were having steak on this night and I thought this would go really, really well paired with it and it was really, really good. Steven actually had leftovers today and he said to me, you can definitely make this again. It is really delicious. You honestly cannot taste the butternut squash in it. It's a winner of a recipe. I will leave it linked for you guys in the video description. So what we're gonna do is we are we're gonna start out with a one pound butternut squash. We're just gonna peel it, seed it, and dice it. And then we're going to take one small onion and then we are going to get that roughly chopped. Once we get both of those chopped, we're gonna add them to the crock pot. And then we are going to add some fresh sage. It says about five leaves of fresh sage minced and then two teaspoons of fresh thyme leaves. I just did a really, really rough chop on these. And then three cloves of garlic chopped. I just use the pre-minced garlic. Then you're going to come in and add half a cup of veggie stock to this. Now I did not have veggie stock. I actually just yesterday finished up a big batch of making veggie stocks because I realized I had none on my pantry shelf so I needed to get some canned up. What we're going to use in this is turkey stock. It ended up tasting perfectly fine without the veggie stock. Using any type of stock you have available would work as long as it's not a strong tasting stock. Like my turkey stock is a very very it's it's not a, a strong tasting one. I don't know how well beef broth would go in this. So you're gonna add everything to that crock pot and then you're going to turn it on to low for eight hours or high for four hours. After the butternut squash is all cooked through, you're gonna come in with an immersion blender and just blend it all up. Now, this is one of the reasons I was actually able to use onions in this because I knew that I was gonna be immersion blending it and it wouldn't be the texture of the onions. I had to actually take it out of the crock pot because it was too small of a thin layer and I wasn't able to immersion blend it. So I just put it into a separate bowl here and just got it immersion blend. Once that's all blended up, you're just going to set that bowl aside and. Get Get your pasta going. So you are going to boil approximately one pound of a macaroni. It just says to cook according to directions. So I just cooked it until it was a nice al dente. I took some cheddar cheese. Now the recipe calls for eight ounces of weighted shredded cheese. You could probably get away with using any type of cheese. I just used a sharp cheddar in this. We really like that flavor for the macaroni. You're going to drain the pasta, rinse it off, and then also add that puree back to the crock pot, then add your cheese and add your macaroni. Give it a good stir, get everything incorporated, and then you're going to add four ounces weighted, it says, of cream cheese. I'm not sure why it says weight. I just, maybe it just really needs to be particular. I'm not sure. I always read reviews with every single recipe. This review said that the amount of salt it calls for was excessive. The recipe calls to add one tablespoon of salt to this. Every single person that reviewed this recipe, or at least half of them, said it was way too salty and they definitely would not add that much salt. I added a teaspoon of salt to start with and I definitely, definitely had to add more because I think that one tablespoon was a really accurate amount of salt to add. I added a little bit of mozzarella cheese also to this because I kind of wanted to make it a little bit more cheesy and then also some pepper to this because we like pepper in our macaroni and cheese. So this is the steak that we had. I was trying to find a small steak, but these were huge ribeye steaks. They were so delicious. I had some leftover sourdough bread, so I just made some garlic bread with it and it was a really nice meal. For the next meal, we are going to make the most delicious salmon recipe I have ever had. It is a baked salmon with lemon butter cream sauce. So, so delicious. So I took four salmon fillets. These are just some pre-frozen ones that I picked up from Costco. They're Alaskan fresh salmon. I had thawed them out in my fridge overnight, so they were just a touch bit still frozen, but it worked out fine. They ended up cooking through completely, and they still have the skin on them, so I put them skin side down. Once you get them put into your, it says in the recipe to use a skillet. I just used a nine by 13, and it worked great. 
I also have my oven preheated at 425 degrees. So we're gonna take some lemons. We're making the sauce right now that's gonna go over top of the salmon while it bakes. So it suggests two tablespoons of freshly squeezed lemon juice. I just squeezed two lemons and it was good for the whole recipe. One tablespoon of olive oil. I used an avocado oil in this. One clove of garlic minced. Two tablespoons of an old style Dijon mustard. I just used a regular Dijon mustard and it worked out fine. And then half a teaspoon of pepper and salt to taste. You're gonna pour that over top of the salmon and then you're gonna put that into the oven and cook that for about 15 minutes. It says 10 to 15 minutes. I'm sure it would vary depending on how thick your salmon is. While that was in the oven cooking, I was getting some pasta made. I had originally thought that it was gonna make a lot more sauce and I thought I'm just gonna make some pasta and we can put the sauce and the salmon over top. It didn't make as much sauce as I'd like so I kind of improvised and did something different with the pasta. You'll see in a minute. We're gonna get the cream sauce started. This is what's going to go over top of the salmon when it comes out of the oven. We're gonna take a quarter cup of butter and just get that melted. It does say to use unsalted, but I use salted and it turned out perfectly fine. And then you're going to add one and a half tablespoons of minced garlic to it. You're gonna cook that until the garlic is nice and fragrant. And then you are going to stir in half a cup of heavy cream or half and half, whichever one you have. And then you are going to cook that until it starts to thicken. It does suggest about five minutes. After that five minutes, and once you notice it's good and thick, you're gonna take it off of the heat, and then you are going to stir in about one to two tablespoons of a lemon juice. I did the one tablespoon, and that was almost too lemony. So I, if you like lemon, if you like a lot of lemon, then do the two tablespoons. Otherwise, the one is definitely great. Then you're going to add in one tablespoon of finely chopped parsley. I didn't have any fresh stuff, so I just used the dry dry stuff and then half a teaspoon of ground black pepper and then just stir that and then add that on top of the salmon. You want to leave that to rest for about five to ten minutes just for that salmon to absorb some of that sauce. So we're going to get back to the pasta. I decided that once that pasta was cooked, I was going to do like a Parmesan butter pasta. This is a really, really great option as a side. It is just plain but got a lot of flavor. So I took probably about a quarter cup of butter and I just melted it in the saucepan. And then I was just eyeballing Parmesan cheese. I probably ended up using about in total for the whole recipe, about half a cup to three quarters cup of grated Parmesan cheese. So I just kind of go in, add the Parmesan cheese and just make sure that it's nice and coated. I added a little bit of salt just to kind of enhance that Parmesan taste perfect. So I had some asparagus in the freezer from our May garden. So I decided that that was going to go perfect with this meal. Had that on the side with a little bit of butter. There's the salmon and then those noodles. This meal was so, so good. It felt like almost too fancy to have, but it was delicious. For the next meal, we are going to make such a quick and easy dessert. And it doesn't look like it's a quick and easy one when somebody is having it. Like if you have guests and you need to have a dessert really quick, this is perfect because it comes together in no time. One thing I like to do is kind of do a batch cooking. And then when I'm doing batch cooking, if I'm making one pie crust, I will usually try to make at least four other pie crusts. And I just throw them in my freezer and pull them out on nights like this when I need a really quick dessert idea. So I have taken this out in the morning and let this pie crust kind of thaw on my counter all day and then I was getting these ready for dessert. I did make them a little bit in advance because the pie crust was already ready to work. So I had this really cool pampered chef cutout, and I just use it to kind of make my shapes of the bottoms. I would say that I have rolled this pie crust out to be pretty thin. I want it to be a little bit thinner than what you would have your standard pie crust at. Once I get them all shaped out I'm just going to start to assemble my little hand pies. So I like to put about a quarter cup of pie filling. This is, I'm using apple pie filling in this situation. I also like to put jam in these as well instead of pie filling. It works really, really well. So once you get your filling put in, I put about a quarter cup of filling into each one. I'm just going to put another one on top and I'm just going to seal it with a fork all the way around just to make sure that 
you know, nothing leaks out during the cooking process. I have my oven preheated at 375 degrees. I'm gonna poke a little kind of breather holes in the top of all of them. I like to make an egg wash to go on top of them, so I'm just going to brush some of that. I just take one egg and a little bit of water, just beat it up a little bit, and then I just brush it on top of each one of these. A nice little finishing touch to these is to add some sugar. So once I get the egg wash on, I'm just going to sprinkle it a little bit with sugar. These go into the oven for 20 to 25 minutes, depending on how hot your oven runs. Here they are coming out. I let them cool a little bit before we eat them because that inside is really, really, really hot. So I like to kind of make it a little bit fancier, especially on this night. I was really going for fine dining. <laughs> so I decided to make some whipped cream. I just take a heavy whipping cream, add a little bit of sugar, make sure your heavy whipped cream is really cold. It helps it whip up a lot faster. Just whip it until you get to that consistency. There you go whipped cream and then we top this with a little bit of caramel sauce this is just a little bit of extra stuff we had in the fridge and there you go fancy easy to make dessert so for the last meal, we are going to do a really fresh salad. I have left the name of the salad there because there is no way that I am going to be able to pronounce that correctly. So that's what we're making. The recipe we are using is from the Magnolia table. I will leave the cookbook linked for you guys in the video description. I love, love, love this pickled red onion recipe. In fact, I use it for pretty much any type of topping. It is so delicious. It is not a canning recipe. This is just a refrigerated pickled red onion. This recipe calls for it, like this salad calls for it. And I thought I would finally end up making the salad. I've made the pickled red onions quite a bit, but now I'm making the actual salad. So to make these onions, what we're gonna do is take two and a half cups of thinly sliced red onion. So that's about one large onion. Now I doubled this recipe because this is my favorite, favorite recipe. So I like to have a lot on hand. You're gonna take three quarters cup of a red wine vinegar and put it into a sauce pot and then add one and a half tablespoons of sugar and one teaspoon of kosher salt. You're just gonna whisk that together. Once it comes to a boil over medium heat, you're going to let it simmer for five minutes. After the five minutes, you're going to pour that over top of the onions. You're gonna let that brine sit for approximately one hour and then you can refrigerate it. In this cookbook, it says that it is good in the refrigerator for up to two days. I have kept this in the refrigerator for at least two months. Because it is such a strong vinegar in it, it really doesn't go bad. It tastes still fresh even after two months. It definitely lasts a long time. That's why I doubled the recipe. Now that we have our onions sitting, getting ready, we're gonna get our noodles ready also. So in order to make these rice noodles, I just boil up a sauce pot of water, add the noodles to that boiling water, put the lid on it and let them sit there for about 10 minutes. After the 10 minutes, we're gonna come and drain those noodles and rinse them off with cold water. So we're gonna get the dressing started. To a sauce pot, we are going to add one third cup of rice vinegar, three tablespoons of honey, two tablespoons of fish sauce, one garlic clove minced, half a teaspoon of grated fresh ginger, half a teaspoon of kosher salt, a quarter teaspoon of crushed red pepper flakes. This is optional. I made a huge mistake with making this salad. I did not read through the directions correctly and I added the quarter cup of toasted sesame oil to it before I cooked it, you are supposed to add that after you cook the sauce. <laughs> so once you get all of those components with the exception of the sesame oil in, you're going to put that on the stove top and you're going to bring that to a simmer on medium heat and you are going to whisk it occasionally until it is thickened and slightly reduced. So about five to six minutes. Then remove it from the heat and then you whisk in your sesame oil. You can refrigerate this also if you don't have your salad ready at that time. This will be fine in the refrigerator. So I drained off those noodles, they were all cooked, and then you can kind of do whatever you like in this. I didn't actually have fresh carrots, so I had some grated carrots in the freezer. I just thawed them out. It says to add one and a half cups of grated carrots, one cup of cucumber cut into matched sticks, three tablespoons of fresh chopped basil leaves. I didn't have fresh basil leaves, so I just used dry stuff. Three tablespoons of fresh chopped cilantro leaves, three tablespoons of fresh mint leaves and then one cup of roasted peanuts. I did not have the peanuts so I did not add them and then you're gonna add that pickled red onion also. So I just kind of made this recipe work for how I liked it. 
This was such a good, refreshing, delicious salad. I loved it so much. So this is the last meal on this video for you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Like I always say, I hope I gave you a little bit of inspiration for your upcoming meals this week. Thank you guys so much for watching. It really does mean a lot to me. I, I definitely love doing this for you guys and I'm glad you are enjoying it or at least I hope you are. <laughs> Thanks again and I hope you have a great day or night whenever you're watching this and I will see you on the next video. Bye guys!